people either become depressed or cynical when they watch the news because they think, oh, everything is bad, etc., etc., or they really don't understand what is going on. It's very superficial. So you hear about all these uh, um, exceptions like uh, uh, bombings or corrupt politicians, etc., etc., um, but you really don't uh, get a sense of how it all fits together. You don't get the bigger picture. I'm Alisa, I'm here for Newspeaks from the Logan Symposium and I'm talking to Rob Weinberg right now. He's a philosopher, founder and editor-in-chief of the Dutch newspaper De Correspondent. So De Correspondent is a crowdfunded like, startup newspaper and it's ad-free until now. Yes. Why did you start this project? It's like, did you see a gap in the market? Was it something yes. you wanted? Maybe you could explain a bit. So we try to make other kinds of news stories uh, that tend to escape the radar of mainstream news and try to figure out what are the structures or the rules in society that um, explain how the world is working or not working. And so do you think there was a need for it, for, for a new kind of journalism? Uh, yes, I think so, because the model we are used to has been around for mo more than a century. We have been told for decades that journalism cannot do without advertisers. Their influence on journalism and the way uh, newspapers or media uh, outlets operate um, it can be very negative. So we decided we will do it without. Maybe we miss some money, who cares? We have other uh, uh, revenues, but we don't have to think at all about the needs or the wishes of businesses trying to sell products to our readers. We just have to focus on what the readers need and want. Uh, how is the correspondent financially sustainable now? I think if you have added value for potential readers, potential audiences, uh, then uh, and you do quality journalism that uh, is relevant to people, then people are willing to pay for that. That's why we have this kind of uh, a system where if you like us and you can pay for us, you can read us anyway, but if you like it and you can pay something, um, uh, we, um, we welcome that. Yeah, so it's a little bit more uh, a trusting way of, of uh, looking at your audience. So, and we did this in, indeed by doing a crowdfunding people could become a member before we existed. And now we, we started with 18,000 crowdfunders and we now today have over 46,000 members. We are an ad-free, member-only platform. And uh, when you become a member, you can access the platform and you can share every story we make without limit. So you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on Twitter, you can email it to people. This is actually how we get new members. So we have a manifesto. And it says we have a profit cap. So 95% uh, of all revenue has to go back into journalism. There's no uh, investors or owners who want more, rev uh, more uh, profit. Uh, so that helps as well. In your talk, you also said that objectivity is a, it's an idea from the last century. Journalism can't be object objective now. Objectivity as an ideal was, uh, arose in the, uh, uh, I think, 19th century. Basically, journalism was just uh, saying what the government officials were telling you. But now, in a system where PR management and marketing is very much in, a, a, a part of the whole information system, uh, being an objective journalist means uh, you just take one side and you take the other side, and then um, you, as a reader, has to figure out what side is true. So, subjectivity, saying, I'm gonna figure out not only what is happening, but what it means and put it in a perspective is a way to explain, uh, not just give the facts, but explain those facts as well. And if you are open and honest about your own uh, uh, ideas about it, then, uh, and, and be transparent about your own perspective on the world, uh, then um, the result will be a, a more honest picture of the world, not, not the only picture of the world, there's no truth with a capital T, um, but it will be a more honest and checkable picture of the world. So that's why I think a journalist should um, leave the ideal of objectivity behind and um, uh, go to a more transparent and honest way of um, telling stories 
and giving their perspective on those stories. And this fits your idea that you have no special desks anymore. So you were saying that you have no economy desk and no politics desk. Exactly. Most newsrooms are ordered in a way like in the 1980s. That really doesn't fit the picture of the world anymore. It's not, it's not like something in a foreign country uh, could not be national news as well and the other way around. Um, everything has to do with economy. What we did is uh, all the correspondents have their own expertise, their own niche, and it can be anything. It can be uh, 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 economics, but it can also be progress, for example, or it can be prejudice, or it can be climate, or it can be inequality, something like that. They are the conversation leader on our platform for those subject matters. And you also include, or you want to include, the expertise of your readers. Most people know nothing about most things. But we all know a lot about one thing. That may be because you have some experience in it, or be because you studied it, or because of your profession. And what we do is we try to get those experts, or those knowledge and expertise of those uh, people on our platform. And then in a dialogue between the audience and the um, journalists, all these questions are raised and answered. And uh, new stories follow from this conversation. And you can only respond if you are a paying member, so that's one thing. You can only respond with your real name. And we um, try to get to people to respond just when you know something about it, not, not your opinion. We all have opinions, but uh, we want your knowledge. And did I understand it right that your journalists, your authors, can contact the readers directly if they see that there's some expertise? So basically what we're doing is, or trying to do, is um, build the biggest Rolodex for a journalist possible. So the, the internet has made it very easy to, to get a group of people together uh, that know a lot about so one or, or a certain topic and then get them involved in sharing what they know with the journalist uh, that works for us. The reason why we built our own uh, CMS, Content Management System, is that most CMSs still are uh, more uh, on, about the publishing side and less about the conversation. Let's say WordPress or something like that. It is about publishing stories on the web. But how to get information from your readers to your journalist is not a big part of those systems. So we thought we have to build it ourselves then we could uh, license it to other platforms who also want to build these uh, communities of experts and, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and members. And it's maybe interesting for our English-speaking audience that you're, you publish articles in English. Yes. Are you trying to go further with it? Or? Yes. We are now a Dutch platform. So, and the Dutch language is very small. But um, w eventually uh, we want to build an English language uh, correspondent platform as well. So where uh, our own stories uh, can be translated into English, uh, but also English native uh, journalists who just write in English can publish stories um, for us uh, as well. In the long term, we would like to be very much an international platform. Do you think your model, your platform, is kind of the future of journalism? I don't think there's, uh, there's one future for, for journalism, and really there's not one model. So many different kinds of uh, uh, models can be applied to very different goals. How philosophy is linked to journalism? Was it important for your development of this new newspaper, for example, your yes. experience in philosophy? Studying philosophy has helped me understand what I think is important and why I think it is important. And for all journalists, uh, understanding their own view of the world, their own philosophy, their own mo morality, uh, can be very helpful in um, uh, um, knowing what kind of journalism, what kind of stories to write, and what kind of uh, uh, things in the world are important to you as a person. Uh, so that's the reason why um, all the subject matters that we write about are by the choice of our journalists. So the journalist says, I really think this is important, I think I tell you why this is important, and this is what I want to write about. Here's news peaks from the Logan Symposium. I'm Clemens and I'm with Duncan Campbell, a morally classified troublemaker and investigative journalist.